nitrate dose is expressed as millimoles per liter, but more correctly, it should be expressed as millimoles of citrate per liter of blood. It is a stoichiometric ratio if you remember your chemistry days. A ratio of the millimoles of citrate to the millimoles of calcium in blood. This ratio therefore determines the fraction of calcium which is bound to citrate and therefore biochemically inactive and the fraction of free ionized calcium. RCA protocols in the literature suggest that the dose of citrate should be about 2.5 to 5 millimoles of citrate per liter of blood. This is how the calculation will work out. Let's say if we use a blood flow rate of 150 ml per minute, which is 9 liters per hour, and target a citrate dose of 2.5 millimoles per liter of blood, the citrate infusion rate would be 9 multiplied by 2.5, and that gives us 22.5 millimoles per hour. If we have a fluid citrate concentration of 18 millimoles per liter, the fluid infusion rate would be 22.5 divided by 18, and that is 1.25 liters per hour. The dose of citrate should be titrated based on the circuit calcium level, and the circuit calcium or circuit free ionized calcium is measured every four to six hourly. This is a sample citrate dose sliding scale which I use in my center. Let's use this example if we started off with a citrate dose of 2.5 millimoles per liter of blood and the measured circuit calcium is 0.48 millimoles per liter. This would fall at this current range and we should increase the dose of citrate by 0.2 millimoles per liter and that would make the current citrate dose 2.7 millimoles per liter. In the previous example, we had worked out our fluid infusion rate of an 80 millimole per liter citrate concentration fluid to be 1.25 liters per hour with a higher dose of citrate of 2.7 it will now work out to be 1.35 liters per hour. My study group explored the dose of citrate in RCA for an Asian population. In protocol 1, we started citrate at 3.0 millimoles per liter of blood, but we found that it is down titrated to an average dose of 2.5 millimoles per liter of blood. We then went on to start with protocol 2, in which the citrate dose was started at 2.5 millimoles per liter of blood. We found that the average citrate dose remained the same for most patients. While we could always start patients on a higher dose of citrate and allow the sliding scale to automatically titrate the dose of citrate downwards, by starting with a lower dose, we reduce the overall citrate exposure to the patients. Calcium replacement is an important part of regional citrate anticoagulation. We want to ensure that the calcium is normal at the beginning of treatment. When it enters the circuit with citrate, we achieve a low calcium in the dialyzer. And when the blood returns to patient, we want to make sure that the patient is normal calcemic. The general principle of calcium replacement is that the rate of calcium lost should be equivalent to the rate of calcium replacement. Calcium is lost through the dialysate effluent and also in the effluent there is the calcium citrate complex. And the rate of calcium loss is related to the prescribed CKRT dose, the weight of the patient, which gives us the affluent flow rate, and the mass transfer coefficient of calcium to the affluent. The rate of calcium replacement is therefore related to the affluent flow rate. 
This series of calculation will help us determine the syringe flow rate, which is dependent on the effluent flow rate, the calcium uh, mass transfer coefficient, as well as the concentration of the calcium fluid that we are using for replacement. These may look like a complex set of calculations, but most machines that handle regional citrate anticoagulation would have protocols to calculate the syringe flow rate of the calcium replacement fluid. Specific for Baxter systems, this is the formula that is embedded into the system. Some of the factors, such as effluence flow rate, would already have been entered as part of the CKRT prescription. What the prescriber needs to do is to first select the calcium replacement fluid concentration. Quite often, this is calcium gluconate 10% with a calcium concentration of 233 millimoles per liter. Or one can choose calcium chloride 10% with a calcium concentration of 680 millimoles per liter. This is entered into the machine and the machine will calculate the syringe flow rate or the Q syringe. However, this is only an approximation of how calcium flux would be and in real life treatment, the calcium flux may not be so accurate. And therefore, within the prescriber's control, we can apply an adjustment factor of calcium compensation. So these are the two things that a prescriber needs to do to determine calcium compensation. In my center, we have a calcium gluconate titration guide. Quite often, we start off with a calcium concentration of 120%. In this example, the machine may calculate a syringe flow rate of 20 millimoles per hour. And if we start off with a calcium compensation of 120%, this would be 20 times 1.2, which means the syringe will run at 24 mils per hour. If let's say uh, later on the systemic calcium comes back as 1.37, we'll take reference from this titration guide and 1.37 uh, seems to be higher than expected for the systemic calcium. We will then reduce the calcium concentration by 5% and that becomes 115%. The machine syringe flow rate of the calcium replacement fluid will therefore be 20 multiplied by 1.15 and it will now run at 23 mils per hour lower than the previous 24 mils per hour. 